last arrangements are coming into place. We'd like, like to offer just a few brief announcements, uh, both of them very reasonable and, and helpful for the success of our wedding ceremony today. One being, if you have an electronic device, uh, take it out and ensure that it's on a setting that won't disturb those who are around you or uh, the wedding ceremony itself. And it may be that you've already done so. Uh, as a kindness, perhaps you can check again uh, just to ensure uh, that it's off and then we can enjoy the program with as little interruptions as, as possible. Uh, and then the second announcement would be with regards to taking pictures in the aisles uh, or uh, in front of the stage at any point during the ceremony. Uh, as you can imagine, the bride and groom, they've arranged for photographers uh, to take pictures so that they can capture the moment uh, for themselves. Uh, and to do that, they'll leave free reign of the aisles and in front of the stage. So even with good intentions, we could get in the way uh, if we weren't to remain in our seats. So uh, if you could just keep that in mind uh, as you uh, perhaps uh, take pictures yourselves, uh, the families, they'll, they'll both appreciate that very much. Okay. And in about a minute's time, uh, the, the music should begin and then the ceremony will, will start. So uh, if you can just be patient until then, uh, we'll, we'll look forward to enjoying the uh, marriage ceremony in just a few moments. Thank you very much.
Well, in God's Word, the Bible, we read that every good gift and every perfect present comes from above. The scripture also includes the fact that there's no variation with Jehovah. That means he'll always give gifts, they'll always be good, and they'll always be perfect. And today, you are receiving many good gifts. Example, you have a gift of many fr friends and family who love you very dearly, travel great distances uh, just to be here uh, with you today. That's a gift from Jehovah. You've been invited to have a wedding ceremony on a building bearing the name of the Universal Sovereign. That's a gift from Jehovah. We have God, God's Word, the Bible, to provide helpful guidelines to set the precedent for today's uh, ceremony, also a gift. And then for the two of you, you have the gift of each other. A good gift of a wife for you, Aaron, and a per perfect present of a husband for you, Valeria. And a good gift doesn't cause, cost the recipient a thing. A good gift satisfies needs. And it's something that you'll admire and express appreciation for again and again and again. Until today, uh, the gifts that you have in each other hasn't cost you a thing. Having love for one another has been relatively easy until this moment. So for you, Aaron, you have the gift of Valeria because of an investment made by her mother, uh, by her sister, and her friends and family. Uh, they're the ones that have invested the time. They've shed the tears. They've been together through successes. They've overcome adversity. And all that investment, all that work, is about to be transferred to you. And for you, Valeria, you have now before you a man, a man who's Parents have invested in him, discipline, uh, training, guidance. Uh, they've laughed together, they've cried together, they've shared successes and overcome adversities. And the sum total of all that effort is today being transferred to you as a gift. It's cost you nothing. But the moment you receive a gift, you now begin to care for it. Now it becomes yours. Now you begin to invest. Now you can admire and share the time together. But raises a question, what makes a transfer like that legal? What makes it legal to transfer all that love and effort uh, to you today? What makes the gift of marriage possible? You have a Bible, let's open it together uh, to the book of Genesis. We wanna look at Genesis chapter two. And we'll find that this precedent of what we're enjoying today was set by Jehovah himself. He saw that even a perfect man needed a helper if he was going to fulfill God's purpose for him. So in Genesis 2, we look at verse 21. We find the Bible states, So Jehovah God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. Why did this happen? Jehovah saw that even the perfect man needed more. So deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he, Jehovah, took one of his ribs and then closed up the flesh over its place. And Jehovah God built the rib that he had taken from the man into a woman. And he, Jehovah, brought her, the wife, to him, the man, the husband. In so doing, Jehovah presented or offered a present, a perfect present, to Adam. She was a gift. He received it. And Jehovah had no intentions of taking that gift back. <coughs> it was never Jehovah's purpose for that gift to be transferred to anyone else, any other man, thus constituting divine law. This arrangement that we're enjoying today is legal in the eyes of Jehovah. And the provision was to be a permanent one. Take note of verse 24. It explains that is why a man will leave his father and his mother, and he will stick to his wife. And by so doing, they'll become one flesh. Now the transfer is complete. Now the good gift of marriage is possible for you. And by entering into the marriage arrangement like you will in just a few moments, you'll have to know that Jehovah wants you to be very happy together. And for that to be possible, there must be love. Now, up to this moment, being happy together has been relatively easy. Showing love for one another hasn't required much. 
But if these feelings that you've enjoyed to this moment are to last, you will have to stay close to Jehovah. Why? Well, for a Christian marriage to last, God has to be put first in the life of both the husband and the wife, by both, by both mates. Jesus explained why. Many years later, Jesus explained why. He said it was the greatest command. You must love Jehovah with everything you have, because once you can do that, then you can love your neighbor. And Aaron, in just a short period of time, your closest neighbor will be Valeria. Valeria, for you to be Aaron. <laughs> later. <laughs> <laughs> That's why marriage can be likened to a united court, twofold in most cases. A husband and wife supporting one another, so close in their affections for one another uh, that they afford themselves a strength that <coughs> provides them a measure of security. But when love for Jehovah is put first, in effect, he becomes a part of the marriage, making the cord now threefold, very strong, and in some cases, unbreakable. That's what the love of Jehovah will, will do. For you to be happy, for this marriage to last, then, you must look to Jehovah first. Yeah. Why? Turn your Bible to Psalm 103. Why look at Jehovah first? Before I can look to my mate for happiness, or, or even a trusted friend for help in facing challenges uh, that you will experience as a couple, but remember what the Bible says in verse 14. Psalm 103, 14. It says, For he, Jehovah, well knows how we are formed. Remembering that we're dust. Now look closely. The Bible says Jehovah knows something about you. What does it mean to know something? By definition, it means to be absolutely certain or sure about something. And Jehovah is absolutely certain about the two of you. What is it? You'll notice the verse says, He well knows the way that you were formed by hand, handmade by Jehovah. Only Jehovah can take dust and breathe life into it so it becomes a living person. And knowing how to breathe life into dust to make it come to live means he knows how to keep it alive. And that being happy is one facet of being alive. Then certainly Jehovah knows how to make you happy. That means you can trust the advice that Jehovah gives. You can trust his word, uh, the Bible. He knows our physical makeup. He knows the emotional makeup. And he knows how to use both so that you can enjoy a permanent bond with happiness, and he knows it better than any marriage counselor. Now you have to remember that because you'll need advice. You'll need counsel, you'll need guidance, and it'll come from many, many sources. Some who feel they, they really know you, and they may know you very well. You'll have some counselors who are self-appointed, didn't ask for help, but they're offering. <laughs> it may be good counsel. You'll have others who are very well-meaning. And some who are very experienced in their own marriage. Families and friends who, who, who may want to offer you some advice. Uh, but Jehovah knows you better than anyone else. And his advice is always better than any human counselor. So how will you know if you're getting good advice? Measure it against God's word. Measure it against what you see in the Bible. And you'll know if the counsel is in harmony with God's word if you continue to make it a practice to study the Bible together. Spend time talking to Jehovah about what you've read, what you're concerned with, what the, what the uh, obstacle uh, you're, you're dealing with. Talk to Jehovah in prayer. Draw close to one another as you worship Jehovah together, even as you're doing right now. And you know what you'll hear? For you, Aaron, you know what you'll hear from Jehovah? Singling out Christian brothers from all the servants of God on the earth, Jehovah says that you are about to be appointed by him as head over her. And while as today you may have no experience in being a husband, 
you are qualified. The Bible tells us that man was created with the ability, the qualities, and the attributes that would make you a successful family head. And as such, that makes you now responsible for Jehovah. So with this new assignment, you take the lead. Meaning what? By definition, taking the lead means you cause one to go with you by taking them by the hand. You stay beside them. Right now, realize it or not, you're taking the lead. You've led her here to listen to Bible-based instruction. And she followed you because you were kind, loving. And with her by your side, you, you'll be capable of leading her to satisfy all her needs. And she'll follow you if you remain kind. And it's your spirituality that will make it possible. By being spiritually minded, you can have the mind of Christ. Open to Ephesians chapter 5. Jesus knew how to be a good head. And while you may have no experience in being a head as of today, you can tap into the vast experience that Christ Jesus had. In Ephesians chapter 5, notice verse 25. The exhortation for you, husbands, Aaron, continue loving Valeria. Just as the Christ also loved the congregation and gave himself up for it. Did Jesus give himself up for the congregation? Did he love the congregation? Yes. How do we know? Jesus had good communication with his anointed followers. Oh, they weren't anointed yet, but they would be. In making up a, a composite bride, Jesus had good communication with his intimate followers. All the things I've heard from my Father, I've made known to you, Jesus said. They did things together. And we know for a fact that at least on one occasion, they attended a wedding together. The groom may have looked just like you. <laughs> bride may have a striking resemblance to you. And if you were to see them in the audience at some point today, sitting together, Jesus and his closest disciples, there'd be no question in your mind that they enjoyed being together. They even had favorite places such as the Garden of Gethsemane. The Bible says that Jesus met there many times with his disciples. And there was no doubt in their minds that they were Jesus' closest companions. And a wife needs to feel that she's your closest companion. Verse 25 also said Jesus gave himself up for his bride. Now one way you can do that is by remaining gentle. Anyone can be gentle under calm situations. Anyone can do that. But when she's not feeling well, or there are moments where emotions appear to be uncontrolled, you'll have to imitate Jesus if you're to in, uh, maintain your sense of kindness. <coughs> and that means you're going to sacrifice your own feelings on occasion. You'll absorb her wounds into your body so her flesh can be healed. Yeah. There'll be moments it feels overwhelming. But that's what it means to imitate the Christ. And in those moments, while you do that, you'll remind Jehovah of his own son. And he'll support you. He'll assist you. And the quality that will come to the fore is your loyal love. Attaching yourself to her until your purpose for her is realized. Until you love her as you do yourself. Notice verse 28. It says, in the same way, Aaron... <coughs> You should love Valeria as your own body. A man who loves his wife loves himself. For no man ever hated his own body. But he feeds it, cherishes it, just as the Christ does the congregation. Now focus on verse 28. You always meet your own needs, Aaron. You've always done that. From this day forward, you'll have many new needs to fill. Your wife's. To protect and cherish this gift Jehovah's given you it requires that you care for her the way Jesus cared for people by putting other others' needs first, and that's true even when you're tired, even when you're distracted, or even when you have your own needs. And if you do that, 
then when you make mistakes, and you will, it'll be easier for Valeri to put you first by freely forgiving you and being happy to have you as her head. And when those mistakes happen, you won't be afraid to ask for her forgiveness. Nor will you be afraid to let her hear you humbly ask Jehovah's forgiveness and thanking him for such an appreciative wife. In verse 29, we ask, how, do, how does a husband show that he cherishes his wife? Well, in public, he'll introduce her to others in a dignified manner. Openly praise her. You'll do that today. You'll have many occasions to do that for the rest of your life. And when Valeria plays a key role in the success of the family, you'll give her credit. You won't hesitate to make that known to others. And privately, she'll sense your affection, a touch of the hand, a smile, a glance across the room. These may be small things, but they make lasting impressions in the heart of a woman. And while those things may not come natural to you, or even be your desires, when you love your wife as your own flesh, you'll do everything you can, to, can do to satisfy those needs as if they were your own. And why? Because Jehovah said, it's not good for the man to continue by himself. Not good. And to satisfy your need, Jehovah's presented a perfect present as a wife for you. And Valeria, that means you'll have a role to play too. A dignified role, honorable role, according to Jehovah's word. And we know you can have such a role because Jehovah's instructed the husband, he's instructed Aaron to assign you honor. It's your assignment from Jehovah. You have the qualifications. You have it in you. And in no way is that role inferior. It's needed. Aaron needs you to complete him. That's what makes you a compliment. And to be a true compliment, there are some principles that you'll want to remember. Uh, looking again at Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verses 22, will, verse 22 will begin, and your understanding of this principle can promote something that's missing in most marriages today. Uh, success and happiness. Notice verse 22. It says, let wives be in subjection to their husbands as to the Lord. Let them do that. Don't stop. Don't try and stop her, the Bible is suggesting. And if you look closely, you'll notice any subjection that you show to Aaron is in reality to Jesus himself. In other words, when you look to Aaron as your head, who you'll see behind him is Jesus Christ himself. Uh, why? Verse 23, because a husband is head of his wife, just as the Christ is head of the congregation, he being a savior of this body. Uh, why do you see uh, Jesus Christ behind Aaron? Why should you uh, view your subjection to Aaron as if it was to Jesus Christ himself? The verse answered, because they're both heads appointed by Jehovah. Same arrangement. Same God. Same benefit. Going a step further, verse 24 adds, In fact, as the congregations in subjection to the Christ, wives should also be to their husbands in everything. In fact, wives should be in subjection, just like the congregation. Valeria, think about it. You've been a part of the Christian congregation for many years now. As a part of the Christian congregation, is it a demeaning role? Is it one, one that undermines your sense of identity, your rights to be a person? No. But being in subjection to the congregation means that uh, you have protection. To have a place in the congregation means you have dignity. It means that you're, you're honored. And in that same way, this is the role that you'll accept in just a few moments. And this being a divine law means that this has to be good for you. Anytime a person realizes that they have something good, they want to tell others all about it and let them see it. So you'll notice in verse 33, it concludes the thought, 
in the second half of the verse, focusing on you, Valeria, says, on the other hand, the wife should have deep respect for her husband. This is how you tell others about the good thing that you realize that you have a role of honor. You have deep respect, but how do you show something like deep respect? Respect should be shown all the time, to everyone. But when you have deep respect, you have to go deep in order to pull it out, to display it. You have to reach for it. Particularly when it isn't coming on its own. Or when it doesn't feel like it is necessarily needed. That's when you have to go deep to show deep respect. Example, when he makes a mistake. And he will make mistakes, not on purpose, not because he wanted to, not because he doesn't care, but it happens. <coughs> and when you refrain from belittling him, when you reassure him that you understand that what he was trying to do was for the best, then he will feel respect. And on those occasions, you may have to go deep to pull that feeling out. But if you'll do it, you'll feel trusted. You'll feel appreciated. And he'll feel accepted as your head. Now you're a true helper. Now you benefit from the divine law, which means it's good for you. And now you contribute to a pleasant family life and a happy future together. Look to Aaron to make decisions. <coughs> Once the, air, the decisions have been made, work to make them succeed. By definition, the word decide literally means to cut off. Uh, in other words, once the decision's made, it's as if you've cut off all the other options, and now the decision that Aaron's made is the only option to go with. As far as you're concerned, it's the only choice. And now you'll go to work to make it a good choice. You'll support him to make it succeed. And if they don't, it won't be anybody's fault. You'll simply continue to stand together and move on. You'll stay united. When Jehovah united the first man and woman together in marriage, it was to be a permanent arrangement. It wasn't supposed to be temporary. They were to be together for life. Is it possible for two individuals to live together happily, indefinitely, forever? Yes. And the Bible highlights two vital factors or keys to make it possible. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 in verse 12. If both the husband and the wife put these keys to use, they'll unlock the door to happiness and many blessings. What are these keys? In verse 12, it says, Accordingly, as God's chosen ones, holy and loved, clothe yourselves with the tender affections of compassion, kindness, humility, mildness, and patience. Now notice, in accord with the fact that you are special to Jehovah. Did you, did you get that at the beginning of verse 12? In accord with the fact that Jehovah has chosen you, visualize now, to be a part of the congregation of the sea of mankind, Jehovah at some point said, Aaron, I choose you. Valeria, I choose you. And why? According to Jehovah, because you're clean. You're holy. And you're loved. Now with that in mind, it says, clothe yourself with tender affections. Clothing protects the body. Love. Key number one, protects the marital unity. Clothing also enhances the beauty of the wearer. Just the way love, key number one, can add luster to this arrangement. And clothing also covers over imperfections. Notice that love covers mistakes, it doesn't eliminate. When such love of God and love of each other is cultivated by a married couple, then the marriage will last. 
and it will be happy. That's not a variable because the Bible says love never fails. You'll notice, Aaron, those were the things that uh, you're to afford Valeria, love. But really it's something you both do for one another. So we're not surprised that the second key, respect, is also a mutual key to success. And if you really love one another, and we believe you do, then you will have respect for one another. You will have that second key to a happy marriage. You will give consideration to, to one another. You'll honor each other. God's word counsels all Christians that when it comes to showing honor, take the lead. Well, according to that verse, who goes first? It depends on who's reading. If I'm reading it, the answer is, I go first. Aaron, if you read it, you say, Aaron goes first. And Valeria, if you're reading it, then your answer would be, I go first. And now you'll have respect and love for one another according to Jehovah's design for this arrangement. Foundation's now been laid. And the stage is set. The time has come. And as we invite up Brother McCary, the groom's father, and soon to be the bride's father in law to administer the marriage vows, we'll leave you with these final exhortations. Aaron, may, may your love for Valeria make her feel cherished. Valeria, may your deep respect for Aaron cause him to flourish. And may your marriage always be honorable in the eyes of Jehovah, the giver of every good gift and every perfect present. Are you guys ready? <laughs> First of all, you guys understand? First I'm going to ask Aaron a question, and then he'll give me his answer, and then Valeria. Do you, Aaron Christopher McCary, in the presence of Jehovah God and these witnesses, take Valeria Littleskaya to be your wedded wife, to love and to cherish, in accordance with the divine law as outlined in the Holy Scriptures for Christian husbands for as long as you both may live? I do. Your turn, Valeria. Do you, Valeria Filskaya, in the presence of Jehovah God and these witnesses, take Aaron Christopher McCary to be your wedded husband, to love and to cherish and deeply respect in accordance with the divine law as outlined in the Holy Scriptures for Christian wives for as long as you both may live? Thank you. Okay. Here's the important part. Here we go. Will you repeat after me? I'll stop and then you repeat the phrase. I, Aaron Christopher McCary, take you, Valeria Filskaya, to be my wedded wife. I, Aaron McCary, Take you, Valeria Podolskaya, to be my wedded wife. To love and to cherish in accordance with the divine law. To love and to cherish in accordance with the divine law. As set forth in the Holy Scriptures for Christian husbands. As set forth in the Scriptures for Christian, Christian husbands. <laughs> for as long as we both shall live together on earth. For as long as we both shall live together on earth. According to God's marital arrangement. According to God's marital arrangement. I, Valeria Filskaya, take you, Aaron Christopher McCary, to be my wedded husband. I, Valeria Filskaya, take you, Aaron Christopher McCary, to be my wedded husband. To love and to cherish and deeply respect. To love and to cherish and deeply respect. In accordance with the divine law, in accordance with the divine law. 
as set forth in the Holy Scriptures for Christian wives. As set forth in the Holy Scriptures for Christian wives. For as long as we both shall live together on earth. For as long as we both shall live together on the earth. According to God's marital arrangement. According to God's marital arrangement. If there are rings to be exchanged, we can do that now. Now these rings they are exchanging is an outward and visible sign signifying to all the uniting of this man and this woman in the bonds of matrimony. For as much as Aaron Christopher McCary and Valeria Philoskaya have covenanted before Jehovah God and these witnesses to accept each other in wedlock, I, as an ordained minister and the authority conferred on me by the Holy Scriptures and the state of Texas, pronounce that they are husband and wife together. What God has yoked together, let no man put apart. I'd like to ask you to join me in prayer. <coughs> Jehovah, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing this beautiful arrangement to happen for Aaron and Valeria to be joined together as husband and wife. And may your spirit continue to be upon them as they continue their new lives together. And uh, may you uh, continue to help them to depend upon you and depend upon each other for strength and for guidance and to look to your uh, word, the Holy Scriptures, for uh, how they should treat and love one another uh, for the rest of their lives. We know this is an important day and uh, we know that the, these things take place uh, by your arrangement and may your spirit continue to be upon us uh, the rest of this day as well. We appreciate the wonderful gift that you've given us and uh, for Aaron and Valeria they appreciate uh, the, the arrangement of marriage so that they can show each other how much they care and love for each other. And may your spirit be upon the rest of this day as well and continue to bless them as they start their new life together. We ask all these things in Jesus name. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> it is my happy pleasure to be in this marriage gathering, brother and sister and Carrie. for a small reception to follow. Due to their desire to keep things modest, they've had to limit the number of guests that they invite. They wanted me to let you know that they are overjoyed that you could join them for their wedding ceremony since it's the most important part of their day. Again, Aaron and Valeria really appreciate the fact that you were able to attend. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> I know it is. 
Thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh my god, she's got married. Oh, I love you too. I love you too. I can't believe this happened. I didn't mess with the house. Congratulations. Do you want me to clean your dress? We have to all fit in. That's silly. It's okay. Later. It took every bit of control I had. Yeah. That's why if you notice during the prayer, I kind of cracked a little bit. Did you? Okay. So I said I used up all my control during the doing the battle. Alright, so tell me how I, as far, how I feel. Um, proud. I'm so happy for Aaron and Valeria. I just cannot express it in words. Jehovah has blessed them so much. And I'm so glad that she's added to my family. We love you. Happy, happy, extremely happy. Excellent. Because uh, my daughter got a very good husband. Now I have two beautiful daughters and two great, spiritually strong, solid uh, sons, too. Awesome. Hey, we're getting married. Like, like legitly. Yeah. Uh, okay. The elders room. Oh. That. <laughs> You've been wanting to like all week. Yeah, you seriously haven't. Now you're backing out? Uno, dos. Privet, privet, privet. You put two languages on one. Uno, dos. Privet, privet, privet. Hey, Lee is married. I am too. Thank you for letting me have your son for the day. He's one of the best people ever. Congratulations. Thank you. It's been like a year. I know it's a far drive. Good to see you. Good to see you. It's okay. I'm glad everyone made it because I was good. I like when we put the directions in, it wasn't the right length, but I'm like, oh no, I hope everybody gets in. I'm glad everybody got it. I don't I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I heard him choke up in the, in the prayer. I was like, he's gonna. Oh, no, he didn't do it. <laughs> you, know, you know, your mom was saying, don't do that. Yeah. I know. No, there's no one. <laughs>
Congratulations. It is. Say congratulations. Oh, congratulations. We, congratulations. we can do that. <laughs> yeah. All right. I know. That makes that makes that's a very nice car. <laughs> All right, they're leaving Bye. the Kingdom Hall. They came single and they're leaving. Married! Oh, <laughs>